Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Mad Medicine. In this psych video, we're going to be discussing obsessive compulsive disorder, aka the OC disorder. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's also known as OCD. Uh, that's just a joke from Arrested Development if you guys watch Arrested Development. Anyways, don't forget that on our YouTube channel, Mad Medicine, we have a playlist for the psych videos that you can watch for step one. And uh, also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your boy if you guys like what we are doing, new videos practically every single day. And with that being said, let's get started and let's start talking about obsessive compulsive disorder. So obsessive compulsive disorder, aka OCD, is a disorder that's simply uh, characterized by people having symptoms of obsessions, compulsions, and and or both, right? It can be either or. Now, the key thing to understand is that the obsessions are going to lead to the compulsions. So the obsessions are the recurring intrusive thoughts, right? These thoughts cannot get out. They can't get these things out of their head. They're always thinking about them, and they feel like, you know, it's drowning their, their mind. They're drowning in what they're thinking about, right? And then what that ends up doing is that they have to relieve this thought by actually doing the action they're thinking about. So if they think their hands are dirty, if they think their hands are disgusting, they're filled with germs, they have to have to go and wash their hands. But this isn't going to be a one-time wash. It's going to be repetitive repetitive, repetitive actions that they're going to do over and over again. And in doing so, the compulsion of, you know, doing it over and over again it is actually caused by the obsession. So the obsession right here, the intrusive thought leads to the repetitive action, aka the compulsion. And therefore, you have OCD. So one thing to understand is that this symptoms that the, the patients suffer actually interfere with their day-to-day -day function. They can't stop uh, doing what they're doing. And because of that, that's going to interfere with their work, their school, their relationships, et cetera, et cetera. It's very debilitating. And I know you guys have probably heard, hey, I have OCD, man. I got OCD. No, shut up. You don't have OCD. If you had OCD, you would not be able to function properly throughout the day. People who have OCD literally can't do anything else other than what their compulsion and, and their obsession is. So, like we're saying, OCD, very, very debilitating symptoms end up interfering with their life. And this is very ego dis tonic behavior. What that means is that the behavior that they're doing goes against their own beliefs, attitude, and goals, right? What they want to achieve, this behavior goes against it. That's very, very important. I have this gift right here of someone washing their hands over and over and over again, and that pretty much sums up what they're doing. They can't function, they can't complete their tasks, and therefore it becomes ego dystonic. Now, this is associated with Tret syndrome. There's a high association. And this is different than OCPD. Remember I said when someone says, hey, I have OCD, they're actually talking about OCPD. They have a personality disorder. OCD is completely different. A lot of people get them mixed up, okay? So we're going to talk about the differences in a second. And the treatment for this is going to be SSRIs combined with uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's the first line. You can also give an SS SNRI like venlafaxine, or you can also give clopidine. Uh, clomipramine, sorry. You can also give those drugs. But mainly you want to give an SSRI and cognitive behavioral therapy in conjunction in order to treat uh, OCD. So we're going to go ahead and now discuss obsessive compulsive personality, personality disorder. This disorder is a personality disorder, folks, in which patients who suffer from it generally have uh, a pattern of excessive concern with orderliness, making sure that everything is perfect. They have to they pay a lot of attention to the details and they have a, a tendency to have mental control over everything, interpersonal control over everything that's happening. These people also have a need to control uh, their own environment and I'm pretty sure you can relate to a lot of these because a lot of medical students a lot of medical professionals you know or pre-med students who want to go into medicine who want to become doctors have some sort of OCPD we are type A personalities and we want to be in charge we, that's why we want to be physicians right because you want to be in charge of the patient care well OCPD is probably what you have to deal with now OCPD unlike OCD 
uh, doesn't interfere with every aspect of their life, but they will interfere with their personal flexibility. And what that means is these patients or these people with OCPD are going to have difficulty keeping relationships. It may interfere with their relationships. It may affect it. And I'm sure you can relate to that as a medical student or even a pre-med student if you're watching this. And uh, this is very egocentric behavior. Egocentric pretty much in this case means that they have certain goals they want to achieve. And because of the way they, they function, because of the fact that they like orderliness, because they like perfection, and uh, and they pay a lot of attention to detail it's probably going to help them out with their goals so if you think about a medical student who you know has OCPD well they like order they like to be perfect they pay a lot of attention to detail they want to be successful OCPD will probably help them out they're very anal they're very type A yeah most likely this is a syntonic uh, uh, problem to have it's going to help them out with their goals so that is why we put this photo right here. Look at you guys. Hey. All right, just to recap, OCD is ego dystonic, okay? And it's very debilitating. Bad, bad, bad. OCPD, on the other hand, is ego syntonic. It's not that bad. It uh syntonic, sorry. Forgot how to spell. Uh, it's ego syntonic, right? It's not that bad. It can interfere with their personal relationships, but with the goal that they want to achieve overall, it's beneficial. Now we're going to talk about two other obsessive compulsive related disorders. These have been popping up more and more on the USMLE step one and the question banks that you guys are going to be doing. So let's talk about the first one, first of the two, and this is called body dysmorphic disorder. And I'm pretty sure you've heard about it. USMLE likes to test this out because it's becoming more and more prevalent and it's, you know, gaining attention in the news and, you know, it's getting, it's getting some clout out there. So body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, is a subsect of OCD in which patients are preoccupied with a minor imaginative defect that they have in their appearance. That's very important, right? Uh, it's very similar to OCD where they can't stop thinking about about these thoughts, very intrusive thoughts, and they may have compulsions that are caused by uh, these thoughts that they're having. Now, this may be minor, like I said, and this could also be imaginative, right? This may not even be there. The body might be perfectly fine, and most often it is, but they may just think that, you know, they're fat or they're, they're disgusting, they're obese. So the perfect example is right here. This photo sums everything up. This girl on the right looks healthy, right? Her arms look clean. She doesn't look like she's overweight. This image of her in her mind, what she sees, right, is this overweight, ugly troll with hairy arms and hairy legs. That's not really what she is. This does not equal who she is. Therefore, what she has is body dysmorphic disorder. That's an example of BDD. So they may have significant emotional distress. This can also lead to eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia, as well as binge eating. Right, so let's just write this down. Disorder, eating disorders can occur. Um, they may have impaired functioning from the day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Remember, this is a type of OCD, so it definitely can affect the day-to-day -day function. These patients often repeatedly seek cosmetic treatment. If you guys haven't heard, if you guys aren't on YouTube that often, then you might not know, but you probably have heard about these couple of guys out there who want to look like Clark Kent. This one guy wants to look like the human Ken doll, right? Uh, proportions that are humanly impossible, but then they go out and get hundreds of plastic surgeries done to make themselves look like that. Those patients, those people are suffering from body dysmorphic disorder. They're fixated on a very small minor defect, an imaginative defect, and they will go out and they will find ways to fix that defect cosmetically. Now, the main treatment for this is going to be CBTs and SSRIs. At this point, you should definitely know that if you're going to you know, put money on any sort of treatment for psych disorders, probably cognitive behavioral therapy combined in junction with SSRIs like sertraline and proxetine, you will be fine. So in this case, that's the answer. So that's the first of the two other OCD-related disorders we're going to talk about. The second one is called trichotillomania. Trichotillomania is an OCD disorder that ha where patients have compulsive tendencies to pull out their own hair. That is very important, and I'm pretty sure one of my homies might have it. He pulls out his eyebrows. But uh, this is popping up more and more, and you'll see this on first aid. And what ends up happening is this can cause significant distress, even though patients might try to stop what they're doing. They're, it's difficult for them to fix this habit. Uh, and usually, this presents throughout 
you know, their body. But the main area is going to be the scalp. Okay, that's the main area where they're going to see baldness. Uh, and the incidence is highest in childhood. We don't really know why, but it spans all ages. It can happen at any time. It can happen. It can last till any time. And the treatment for this is going to be cognitive behavioral therapy first. If that doesn't work, if uh, trichotillomania still persists, you can move on to give Medicaid, medical treatment with uh, SSRIs to, you know, to treat uh, severe forms of trichotillomania. But that's pretty much it. Okay, so just to recap, OCD, ego, dystonic, okay, and it's debilitating. OCPD is ego syntonic, okay, body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, is pretty much OCD of the body, of the body slash image. Okay, and trichotillomania is uh, hair pulling. Boom, that summarizes pretty much, uh, I want to say like 70% of the things you need to know. Okay, remember CBT slash SSRI, BDD is also going to be CBT plus uh, SSRIs. Trichotillomania is just CBT. All right, with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helped. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. And if you guys don't already know, we post these lectures also on podcasts. So if you guys are interested, if you guys are going to the clinic, to the gym, what have you, you guys want to listen, go check out any of your major podcast providers and uh, just uh, search us, Mad Medicine, search it, and we'll pop up. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.